So, welcome to part two, graphing tangent and cotangent. We're going to start off with this first e example here where we want to graph the function 2 tangent of theta minus 1. So the first thing we're going to do is find the period. Now remember from part one, to get the period, instead of 2 pi over b, it's going to be just pi over b. And of course b is 1, so we get just pi over 1. So the period is just going to repeat every 1. We're not going to necessarily worry about the steps. Really what the steps is, is just when does it repeat. It's going to repeat every six ticks on our graph here. Now, there is no phase shift. To get the asymptotes, I'm going to wait till I graph it to get the asymptotes. Always a little bit easier. There is a vertical shift. It's negative one, so it's going to go down one. Down one unit. So when I graph the tangent function, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the asymptotes. Now we may remember, hopefully from earlier, the asymptotes from tangent are at the pi over 2's. So if I, if I go over here to pi over 2, 1, 2, 3, here's pi over 2, 1, 2, 3, there's pi, 1, 2, 3, there's 3 pi over 2. So these are my asymptotes, only at the pi over 2's. Keep going, going the other way. One, two, three. There's another asymptote at negative pi over two. And one, two, three. There's negative pi. That's not an asymptote, but we want to like it anyways. One, two, three. There's negative three pi over two. One, two, three. Negative two pi, but we draw an asymptote at three pi over two. Next, we're going to draw is my vertical shift. Remember, that's my midline. All that tells me is where it's going to cross. So it's down 1, so if I scale this by 1, there's negative 1 down here. So there is my midline, okay? There is my midline. There we go. Now, so to graph this, remember tangent, it crosses the x-axis at zeros and the pi's. But they're going to be moved down. See, my normal point is here, here, and here, and here, and here. But because of our translation, each one of these points goes down one, down one, down one, down one, down one, and we no longer need those, so we scratch them out. Now, we could remember what the, another point like pi over four, remember pi over four was one, but another way to remember is just remember this, tangent goes up. So if I start here, it has to go up the asymptote and then down the asymptote this way. And on the other and we just repeat that pattern in each little section. Now of course this thing go here, but we can go down this side, so be careful. Over here, going up, going down, going up, all around. There we go. So now I'm gonna get the equations of my asymptotes. I'm getting from my graph, they're at the pi over two. So remember that's gonna be x equals just name one of your asymptotes, pi over two, plus or minus and then remember, they repeat every pi. That's where period comes from, pi k. And there's the graph of 2 tangent theta minus 1. All right, to get the next one, we're going to graph cotangent next. Now, this one has a phase shift. So I'm going to go ahead and put that out here, plus pi over 6. Remember, that's, that's going to go to the right one tick mark. Okay, so get the period. Like before, it's just, remember, pi over b. B in this case is 1, so it's still pi. So remember that. Don't worry about the steps. That just remember we're going to repeat every 6 ticks. Normally it's every, with cosine and sine, remember it's 2 pi every 12 ticks. If with uh, tangent and cotangent, it's every 6. Um, asymptotes, again, I'll wait for the graph. But if you want to, if you can remember one, that's pretty easy. The first asymptote is normally at 0. I'm going to put that down here for now. We'll see why in a second. The asymptote is normally at 0 plus or minus pi k. I'm not going to put it in here yet because our phase shift is going to change that. There is no vertical shift. So I'm going to go ahead and graph where my asymptotes normally are at 0. The next one will be at pi. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Remember, pi is every 6. And at 2 pi. Negative pi. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And at negative 2 pi. Now, these are where the asymptotes are normally located. 
0, pi, 2 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi. But our phase shift is going to move our asymptote to the right one tick. So this is known my asymptote at 0. My new asymptote comes over here at pi over 6. At pi becomes, ah, move it to the right one. Each point gets moved. And I'll even move this one too. Oh, look at that. There we go. To the right one. And I'm just moving my asymptotes over to the right one from where they normally are. I am moving to the right. There's my, so those are my asymptotes right there in the red. Now, remember, when we normally graph cotangent, it crosses the x-axis normally at pi over 2. But again, we're going to move it to the right one unit. Now, an easy way to remember it is just go in between your asymptotes. Go in between your asymptotes, and that's where it's going to cross. Go in between, or basically three over, that's where it crosses. One, two, three, and that's where it crosses. Now, remember, tangent goes up. Cotangent goes down. So we're going to go down the asymptotes here. And there's my first one. And I'm just going to repeat the pattern over and over again until I can't go anymore. Isn't this the highlight of our day, right? Yes, it is. And there is our cotangent graph. Whoop, now, we forgot to do the domain and ranges for this one. Now, the domain is not too bad to do here. We're going to write this in our set builder, remember. X such that X cannot equal our asymptotes pi over 2 plus or minus pi k. Now the range is just all real. Now for this one our asymptotes has changed. So let's go and take a look at where our asymptote is. So I'm going to look at one asymptote. One asymptote is at pi over 6. So that's my first one. See, that's no longer my asymptotes at this 0. It's now starting at pi over 6 for my first asymptote. Remember we had to move everything over pi over 6 units. So to get the next asymptote, we're going to add plus or minus pi k. And therefore, to get our domain, it's everything but that, pi over 6 plus or minus pi k. And the range, again, is all real. All right. So I'm going to let you guys do number. So there's our graph now. Now I'm going to go and let you guys do the tan negative tangent of theta. All that's going to do is do what? What do you think that's going to do? Oh, yeah. It's going to flip it, right? It's going to flip our graph. Okay? But I want to take a look at this next one over here because we have a period change. So to get our period, remember it's just pi over b this time, so it's going to be pi over 2. Now, what that means for us, instead of repeating every 6, this will repeat every 3 ticks. That's what that means for us. There is no phase shift. Now, there are going to be some asymptotes, so if you hopefully remember, the first asymptote for cotangent is going to be 0, right, plus or minus pi k. I'm not going to worry about putting it in here yet until I get it from my graph. There is no vertical shift. Now, there is an amplitude, but that's not really going to affect our graph much because we're not going to worry about the points. We just remember cotangent goes down. It just means it goes a little bit steeper. That just means it goes down steeper. Go, whoops, down not as steep. That's what that means for us. We'll take a look at that when we get to it. It's going to be a little bit wider at the bottom, at the uh, where it crosses. We'll talk about that in a second here. But the important thing to remember is we're going to repeat every three ticks now. Now, my first asymptote is at zero. There is no phase shift, so my first asymptote will still be at zero. But now, instead of every pi over six, one, two, three, four, five, six, we're going to have an asymptote every three ticks. That's what this period means. That means our asymptotes are going to be every three ticks. So to get the asymptotes, we're going to go every three tick marks. One, two, three. There's an asymptote. 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 Going backwards, one, two, three, there's an asymptote. One, two, three, there's an asymptote. One, two, three, there's an asymptote. 
One, two, three. There's an asymptote. That's a lot of asymptotes. All right. So to graph it now, cotangent, just remember, just go in the middle. Doesn't, you're not going to be perfect on these. Everywhere in the middle, between each set of asymptotes, you're just going to graph your little points here. We. Okay? Now, so to graph this, remember, cotangent goes down. The one-half just makes it a little bit wider. Now, if you're not going to be perfect on this like me, because I am perfect, but it's going to look something like this. There is my cotangent graph. Okay? And we're going to keep going with the pattern. Okay? And there's our cotangent graph. Kind of in there a little bit. That's okay. And again, all right, so it's not perfect. Now, our asymptotes, again, come from here. Be careful. When I get this, it's going to be x equals, I pick my first asymptote, it's 0. But it normally repeats every pi over k. It no longer does it. It's repeating every pi over 2. And that's basically your period. So if you know your period, you actually know where the asymptotes are. It's pi over 2 k. And then to get your domain and range, you can get those. Remember, your domain is just anything but those. And your range is all real. Okay, so this is, uh, I would like you guys to go and try number three. Bring this into your class tomorrow. We'll go over questions if you have it in class. And work on some problems. Thank you, guys. Have fun.